Hey guys, and welcome back to Gunpla Building, where we're building this HGUC Yaga Doga. It should look like this, but as you can see, we're making ours look a little bit different. In the last video, we did all this painting, so this is what you saw at the end of the last portion, but now it's time to go in and do some detail painting. And actually, this is probably one of my favorite parts about building kits, is because this is where um, you really like bring out the details in the kit. I mean, like panel lining and putting on decals and stuff like that uh, helps make the kit look more detailed of course but um, this is something that I, I really enjoy doing quite a bit and uh, it's not very easy but I think it's not really all that difficult either it's relatively simple and you only need a few different uh, tools to do it so let's uh, just go ahead and get into what you need to do some detail painting of course like like everything that we've been uh, looking at so far, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You don't have to do it exactly the way that I do, and a lot of people do it very differently with different types of paint and different types of brushes and different techniques and this and that. I'm just going to show you the way that I usually go about doing it and how it's uh, worked for me so far. And basically, what that is, is basically using some enamel paints like what we have here. These are all just Tamiya enamel paints with the exception of one. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, they're just Tamiya enamel paints and if you can see on there that's uh, above the X16 it says Tamiya color enamel paint so uh, that's how you can tell that. So we need the enamel paint then we also need some Tamiya color enamel paint thinner. This would be X20 uh, gonna need some of this, not very expensive, I think it's maybe, um, if you can get it for the uh, list price, it's only maybe five dollars, something like that, for this container oven, it, lasts, it should last you quite a while. And then you're going to need a brush, something very small, this brush is actually a 0.9 millimeter, so it's uh, just under a millimeter in uh, its thickness, but I've actually cut the bristles a little bit to make it even a little bit thinner. And I do have a new one, actually here, that I'm uh, going to wait and open up a little bit later. But I think this new one that I bought is like 1.2 millimeters, I think a little bit larger. Which I might end up cutting that a little bit later than two, but anyway, uh, just a really fine brush. Basically, a, not maybe, I don't know exactly how fine you can get, but maybe not ex the finest thing that you can get, but you want it to be pretty small. And then you can have some variety too, because there'll be times when you, when this might be a little bit too small, it's going to take you too long to paint what you're trying to paint. But other than that, um, just some tissue, uh, any kind of, I'm just using toilet tissue, use kitchen towels, uh, whatever. And then you're going to need some uh, earbuds or cotton swabs or Q-tips, whatever you have to call them. These once again, also pretty cheap. So basically. Pretty much everything you're going to be using is pretty cheap. These bottles of paint are um, like two or three dollars a bottle. You can see on here this was 157 yen, so that's like a uh, dollar fifty. Uh, if you're importing it, though, it's going to be a little bit more. But anyway, it shouldn't be more than five dollars a bottle. And like I said, this shouldn't be more than ten dollars. And a brush, brush might be one of the mo one of the more expensive things, but even still, not all that much. So. Let's get into it. Um, basically, I just want to... There, there's going to be a lot of uh, detail painting on this because it is a high grade and there's not a whole lot of color, uh, like part separation. So I did do some masking like we saw in the end of the painting video. Uh, I showed you that I did mask this part so at least like the joint is all in the color it's supposed to be. But I think on the majority of the parts there's going to be at least a, something a little something that's going to need a little bit of detail painting so why don't we just start with going over the colors that I'm going to use and I'm not totally sure I'm going to actually use all these colors um, but here are the ones that I've pulled out that I think I might need or want to use on this project um, just going down the line here there's going to be XF64 is red brown we might use this one for a little bit of uh, weathering and kind of um, similar like panel lining basically and then this one is X10 is a gunmetal gunmetal is a pretty standard uh, color that's used a lot on frame parts and weapons stuff like that 
Next, this is XF63, it's German gray, another just kind of standard gray color. And then uh, XF1 is flat black. This is uh, basically a go to color for a lot of things, uh, including uh, pen aligning, which we'll get to that in a maybe the next video, I guess, in a future video. And next is XF19, this is sky gray, this is just a very light gray color, probably going to be pretty similar to our color here. Uh, obviously this one's going to be a little bit more blue, but pretty similar tone there. X16 is just purple, that's going to be for adding a little style to the kit. And X11 is uh, chrome silver, not sure if we're really going to be using any of this, I'm not sure. I don't really usually like to use a whole lot of silver or titanium kind of colors on the kit, but we might use some. And then the same with this one, uh, this is XF2, it's flat white. I'm not sure if we're going to use this, but I think uh, there is a use for this that I might show you guys. And this one is not a Tamiya, but this is actually a Gaia color. This is actually a lacquer paint. Um, I think when I bought this, I, I needed a pink like this for a Zaku uh, Mono Eye, which is what we're going to use for this. We're just I'm only going to use this just to paint the Mono Eye on the kit. And I don't know why I bought a lacquer paint because mostly lacquer is mostly going to be used for um, spraying out of an airbrush. But um, basically, the only use that I've ever used this paint for is just for like Zaku Mono Eyes. So. Uh, obviously, I haven't really used a whole lot of this paint. There's still quite a bit in there. So I'm only using like one drop on uh, a kit every now and then. So those are all our paints. Now, uh, the thinner is mostly going to be used for cleaning up, cleaning the brush, and then cleaning up uh, any parts that maybe we need to clean up some excess. We painted outside where we needed to. For just painting really small details, you really don't need to thin the paint. Uh, I guess some people maybe do, and some people I guess might say that you need to, but from my experience, just painting little details and stuff, you don't really need to thin the paint at all, because um, it's thick, uh, so if you're painting a large area, it's not, you definitely need to thin it, because it is too thick, it's gonna show like brush marks, and it just won't be, won't be even, but if you're only painting just like tiny little areas, it'll be fine to just paint that uh, without thinning the paint at all, so. I'll show you guys a bit more about that, but why don't we get to painting? I think I need to organize these parts and uh, sort out the ones that aren't going to need anything, and I think there's some, so let me get, give me a minute and I'll sort out uh, which parts need painting and which parts don't, so hang on just a minute. Alright, well, as you can see, quite a lot of parts still remain. I actually only was able to put a, a handful of them, maybe about percent or 15 percent away not to be painted but anyway a lot of these it's just a very small bit so it should be pretty simple I think uh, a lot of this is basically just going to be um, painting like on the insides like here's a pretty easy example on the inside of here this obviously we don't want to just be all blue like light blue like that on the inside so I'm gonna have to paint all of that in there um, I mean, it could be like that, but I don't want to leave it like that, so... First thing I need to do is, uh, I'm just gonna use this one first, just the German Grey, to shake it really well, so... Just go ahead and do that, shake it... And shake it upside down... Okay, and that should be shaken enough now, so I'll just open it up. Then usually, uh, instead of uh, dipping the paintbrush into the paint bottle, uh, there's a little bit of paint here in the cap. I usually just use this paint here in the cap, because there's just a little bit of paint there, but it's enough to use. And then once I've used that, then I just put the cap back on, shake it up really well again, and then just continue to use the paint out of the cap, because then that way I know I'm not leaving the cap off of it too long, I'm shaking it up every so often. Uh, just usually works out pretty well for me, so just put that down, just take a part pretty simple like this, it's just the uh, hand cover, manipulator cover, and just this, uh, this section here, this top section uh, that's just kind of a little bit separated, I'm just going to paint that in this darker gray, so just need to take a little bit of paint, not very much, 
So you can see there's just a little bit there on the edge of the brush and just going to be careful to brush that on. Excuse me. The thing about this too is that you just have to do it really carefully and just, yeah, be really careful to watch what you're doing. If you do go a little bit out of where you want to go, it's okay because we can fix that. Everything can be fixed. That's just one thing to keep in mind. You're gonna make mistakes every now and then. Okay, that should do it. Now, uh, as you can see, I've got that part it's in that darker gray. I did go, I'm not sure how well you can see on the video, but it is, did go out, uh, out there a little bit, but that's very, gonna be very easy to clean up here in a few minutes. This paint, um, it will dry. I mean, when you're just painting just a little bit like that, it will dry in about 10 to 20 minutes enough so that you can put on another coat or clean it up or whatever if you need to. Uh, for it to fully cure though, you should let it um, stay on for about 24 hours or so. But um, if you need to put on a second coat, if you need to just do a little bit of cleanup, it's gonna be dry enough after about 15, 20 minutes, I'd say, so we'll just set that aside. I'll go ahead and paint the other manipulator covers uh, a little bit later. Uh, then the, another piece I wanna do is just this uh, uh, horn part. Just there's a very small part on the front that's separated by a small panel line. Let me uh, make this a bit darker so maybe you can see that. Maybe still not all that well. Anyway, the little part here, here on the front that I'm going to try to paint that as well. So let's see. Okay, so that's that, and it's glossy and shiny now, but later once we've got top coat on there, everything will be dulled, and once it's dry as well. So yeah, just gonna be doing this for a little bit. Why don't we skip ahead a little bit, just so I can show you what we're doing. So I wanna change the color, so now I need to get this uh, German Gray off my brush. So here's where we're gonna use the thinner. And I've just got a small little metal tray. You can just you can buy these. This is also made by Tamiya, I believe. But uh, pretty much anything will work. And then a uh, dropper, whatever. There's a lot of different sizes and shapes. I've just got a few of these long ones. And I just need to take some thinner. And a little bit more than that. And then just going to rub the brush around in the thinner a bit just to clean off the brush. Don't press it in there uh, really hard, just enough will be fine. And then just going to dab it with the paper. And if you're seeing a lot of paint, still coming off on the paper, then there's still a lot of paint on the brush and you need to brush it in here in the thinner some more. But uh, I think I'm good to go. I didn't really use much paint, so there shouldn't be much paint on there. We'll just put our thinner off to the side, get any excess thinner out of the eyedropper. Put that off to the side. Now we can use another color. Um, this is the part that's going inside the head. There's the mono eye there on the front. And then there's some just kind of uh, rigid detail around the edges that I think I want to try to bring out a little bit. So here's where I think we might actually use a little bit of the chrome silver. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Let me shake it up first. Okay. So. 
and I'm not sure if you can see that very well on camera, but as you can see with like these chrome or like bronze, titanium, copper, any kind of these like metallic colors, um, the, the paint is a little bit different, so uh, just be a little bit aware of that. It's just going to brush on a little bit differently, so uh, just want to paint a little bit around on the side of that. Just something like that to bring out the detail that you can see on that side compared to this side where it's not painted. So we've just got a little bit of detail on the side. You just hit the other side a little bit now. Alright, and that's pretty good. Anyway, when you're painting a really small surface like this, you just want to be careful to just kind of let the brush do the work. I don't know if that really makes sense. It's really hard to describe and you just have to practice basically, but um, when you put on the paint on as if it's just like a really small raised surface, if it, the surface is raised, then when you, like, you put the brush on there, the paint will, will fill kind of the surface of that small area if you're just like, just barely pressing it on there. So just be careful to do it really super gently. Also, this part is quite small, um, so, I am able to hold it by hand, uh, but it's any any smaller or probably just to be safe, it would be a good idea to go back and use your alligator clips like we use for spraying. Uh, just like clip the part and then that would be easier to hold it while you're painting it. I'll go ahead and leave it clipped while we go ahead and do this next part where we're gonna put a drop of paint on that mono eye. and. Um, let me clean the brush first. Okay, and like I said, this is lacquer paint, so I'm actually not gonna brush this by hand because I don't have any lacquer thinner to clean the brush afterwards. Um, I can just use a toothpick for this. So I'm just gonna take just a normal toothpick like this. Helps if it's one that has a flat end like that. And basically, don't forget to shake it first. Right, so basically, just want to open it up. And where before I was taking the paint off the cap, but for this we're just going to take it from the center, so just pop this bubble there on the top. Wipe that away. Um, the enamel paint doesn't really have much of a smell, so you're kind of okay. Um, just doing some hand painting with the enamels, but this lacquer paint, like as soon as I open it, I can smell that really strong smell. So just be careful about that if you're going to be using a lot of it. Now, just make sure and focus and see what I'm doing here. Just going to dip the toothpick down there and just get a little bit of paint, just like a drop of paint on the edge, on the end of the toothpick. too much. And then I'm just going to touch it, uh, just touch it to the mono eye and it will make just a drop on the mono eye. So let me get in focus again here. Finding that that part on the top is getting a little bit in the way, so just want to use this to press on there. There we go. That's gonna be good. And uh, one reason why it works really well to just drop it on there is because then it um, it makes kind of a, a the drop of paint will stay on that surface in kind of a dome shape, so it kind of helps to just make it look like uh, like it's like a dome like camera shape. When the paint dries it'll flatten out a little bit but it'll still kind of keep that rounded shape uh, on the end. So and I want to make sure that this stays upright because if I put it to the side then that drop of paint might slide a little bit off to the side so I want to keep it upright so I'm just going to stick this into my block here. Just 
like that until we can let that dry. That's definitely, I'm gonna leave that for at least 24 hours like that. Uh, and then that's it for this pink paint. We'll just put this away until the next Xeon kit. So next I'm just gonna continue with some other um, painting. I think maybe one thing that I want to show you is also painting the inside of the thrusters. So like I said in the painting video, I sprayed these in just flat black. These are also going to be very uh, helpful to use clips to hold these while you're painting and while you're drying them. I'm going to paint the inside of these in a light gray, I think in this sky gray color on the inside. So let me go ahead and shake this up and we'll do that. And actually, the reason that I'm doing this in this color is because the color that I really want to paint the inside is going to be purple. But uh, I'm going to use purple for the inside of the thrusters and for the power cables. But on the power cables, I'm just going to paint it directly on the primer. So it's just going to be purple on top of uh, this gray color. But when I paint the purple on top of the black inside here, it's obviously going to be much darker because it's on top of black. So I'm going to paint the inside of these in gray first, in this light gray, so it's going to be a very similar color to the primer. Then when I paint the purple on, on top of that, then it's uh, going to match the shade better. So let's try it. Um, in order to paint uh, one color on top of another color though, I'm definitely going to need a lot more drying time. So might have to come back to that a, li a little bit later, but I think, yeah, I need to this video is going to take a little bit longer to record, I think. So, just going to paint everywhere inside the thrusters. Okay, and then I get something like that. Now, I, it's definitely rough around the edge, you can see, but I'm definitely, I know I'm going to have to clean this up a bit. Uh, painting, painting on the inside of thrusters in this way is usually like that, where I know uh, it's very hard to do it uh, exactly. So it's basically, I know I'm gonna go off the edge, but then uh, just cleaning around the edge is very, very easy to do with the Q-tip and some thinner, so we'll just do that later. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to dry and do it on all the inside of all the other thrusters as well as there's quite a bit. There's let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 different thrusters. So I'll paint all of those and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so that's all the thrusters painted on the inside. And once again, yeah, it's just it's rough around the edges just because I know I'm going to be cleaning it up again later. And one thing that's good, kind of good about doing that is just it just makes sure that you um, got paint around all the inside where you know that you want paint just like going over a little bit over the edge uh, is just like a way to ensure that you know you've got um, everywhere you need to. Now I am really anxious to try out this purple so I'm going to try to paint some of the energy cables here. Uh, now this purple is brand new so I'm going to have to shake it quite a bit and then I think I'm probably going to have to stir it too because as you can see like looking on the bottom it's almost basically white. It's very, very separated. So I'm gonna shake it quite a lot and then we're probably gonna need to stir it too. So let's go. All right, yeah, as you can see, after all that shaking, it's still uh, very separated. So why don't we take another toothpick and I'm just going to stir this with the toothpick. Okay, after a lot of shaking and stirring and shaking and stirring, finally, I think it's about as good as it's going to get. So let's just take some and start painting on here. And basically I'm just painting this entire part, so I'm not really needing to be careful about uh, where I'm painting. And I could probably even use a uh, larger brush for this because uh, 
there's not really any need to be so cautious with this tiny brush. But let's just say, for example, I'm just starting out at this and I only have one brush and I just have to do it all with one brush. So if that's the case for you, you just have to do it like this. And there we go, there's this set of power cables painted in purple. That purple looks really nice, I think, especially with these colors there against that. You can see it's gonna look pretty cool, very uh, stylistic, and that's kind of the approach that I'm going for. Not so much realistic, but stylistic, stylized for this kit. Um, I didn't paint this top part because obviously that's not part of the tube, so I'm gonna paint that just in a gray color, I think, uh, a little bit later. But just painting the tubes first looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, paint all the rest of the tubes. Okay, there's our power cable parts, all in purple. Looking pretty cool, very happy about those. Um, we're just gonna set those to the side uh, to dry. And I thought now would be a good time to go back to the first part that we painted, this manipulator cover, because the gray on there is plenty dry enough, we can go ahead and clean that up. Now uh, I'm just going to clean this up using a, a cotton bud and some thinner here. Now you can also use lighter fluid and a lot of people use lighter fluid to just clean up enamel, but I'll show you about using that uh, when we do panel lining. For this we're just going to use um, the thinner. So. Mm, people have, I think, a lot of different ways of, of getting the thinner onto the cotton bud. I'll show you my way, and uh, that's kind of worked very well for me in the past. I'm also going to need a new uh, tissue here. What I do is I just take the bottle here and just um, kind of do this. There we go, just splash that. Then open it. Now there's going to be some thinner here in the cap, so I'll just take the cotton swab, wipe around in there. Now I've got a bunch of thinner on the cotton bud, but a little bit too much. You don't really want it soaked, so then I just take it on here, just roll it on the tissue a little bit. You can see I took up some of it with the tissue, and now there's just, just a little bit on there, and then I can uh, gently rub it on the part just to clean up that little bit and there, that's all it took. That little bit where I went over the edge is now gone and it looks perfect. Just checking all the angles here, everything looks good. So that part's all good. You can go ahead and put that in the box because that part's now done. Um, this part, which was the part on the top uh, of the crest, just a little bit of cleanup on this one as well. This one I did pretty well to stay within the lines. I think it's pretty good. Not really gonna need a whole lot there. That's basically it. Put that in the box as well. And that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, um, there are a few other techniques, uh, kind of just little bits of things that I want to show you about hand painting with some enamels, uh, but maybe on some other kits at other times because there are things that are not really applicable to this kit at this present time. So those are the things I'll show you in some other future kind of tutorials and stuff. For the most part, that's basically all that we're going to need to know or all that we're going to need to do for this kit, uh, I'll just go over a bit here for a moment some of the other things that I'm going to be doing with um, this painting, just for, we'll just go over all these parts I guess. Uh, these manipulator covers, just going to do the same thing like we did before. Uh, with this chest piece, I'm only going to just paint this one little part there on the top. Uh, I'm just going to paint that in grey. Same, similar with the manipulator covers, I just want a little um, color separation there. 
Here for the skirt armor, uh, I'm just going to paint the back. Uh, I'm just going to paint the back in some gray. And then for those other details, I'm going to go in with a different, uh, with the light gray. So like a German gray on the inside to make it dark. And then on the kind of raised parts, put a little bit of that um, lighter gray inside there. Inside um, this front part of the leg, we can probably uh, stick that on there for the time being, just so you can see how that's going to look. Um, all of this inside, I'm just going to paint in gray. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be that. For the side skirts, I just need to paint the inside of that gray. For a lot of this armor, it's just painting the inside gray because uh, basically, like, when you think about the armor, I mean, uh, it's just like gray metal, right? So um, the outside is what's painted just to give it a, I don't know, a paint job on the outside. But there's not really any need for them to paint the inside, so it probably makes more sense that the inside just it remains that gray color and just the outside is painted. So I'm going to basically just paint the inside. Same thing with the shoulder armor parts, just painting the inside gray. Um, these upper arm parts, just painting that um, part that's going under the energy cables in gray. This part for the top of the or top and back of the head, just painting the inside of that gray. If you're picking up a little bit of a theme here, uh, here on these parts on the feet, this uh, kind of bar there in the center, I just want to paint that in gray. And uh, same here with these parts for the feet, just painting um, that center circle part in gray. Same thing for the back, uh, inside of the back skirt. And let's see. Um, for these parts, I'm just going to paint this uh, one little detail there in the front center. It's just that kind of raised section. I'm just going to drop a little bit of paint on that, I think. That's pretty much it for these parts. Um, but for the, this, I'm going to need to do a little bit of detail painting on some of the raised and lower sections in there. And then this is um, the part that uh, sticks out through through the front of there, so that's going to be in gray. And yeah, um, same thing for the uh, funnels inside and this back part gray. Basically, just all little details in gray for the most part, and different shades of gray. So maybe 50 shades of gray, you might say. That is a little bit too much rhyming sounded kind of gay. And uh, for the scope, I'm not sure. I have a kind of a green color that I might use for that scope to make it green. Or I'm not quite sure yet, but yeah, just as you can imagine on the gun, might just do a little bit of color separation by painting in some parts in gray. And yeah. Pretty much it. So I don't really need to show you guys all of that on camera as this has uh, pretty much already gone on long enough. I think you pretty much get the idea of how to do the hand painting just very slowly, carefully. It takes a long time but it makes it look so much better so I'll go ahead and work some more on that and then I'll come back once it's all finished, show you how everything looked before we uh, finish up the video. So I'll see you later. Alright guys, uh, all of the detail painting is now done, all except for one little piece. This is the piece that goes on the top of the rifle. This um, cable part, I'm going to paint that red. And uh, basically just to do that, I'm going to paint it right. I'm uh, going to paint it white first, and then paint the red on top of that so the red is nice and bright. Uh, inside the camera, I just dro uh, dropped a little bit of green in there. Uh, quite a bit of green actually, I kind of filled that space because I wanted to just make it a little bit more out. Anyway, everything else uh, is all painted. There's just for example inside, you can see just painted some dark gray in there. It's just uh, some small subtle differences uh, for that mostly. All of the thrusters have purple on the inside now, so 
Those are looking pretty cool. Just, uh, just some ones for the side skirt. I think that's going to be pretty interesting looking. Here's a look at the head. Pretty cool, I guess. Okay, all right. And I'm going to just kind of pop some of this together here just to give you guys a look at how the color scheme is going so far. And just to give you guys an idea pretty cool. Uh, like I said, that uh, that light gray, light blue color is a little bit more blue than I hoped, but still I think it's going to look pretty cool once it's all done. And that brown inside, um, just poking out here and there, is going to be cool. So, uh, looking good. And I guess from here, guys, the next video is going to be just doing some top coat, I think. I want to spray some just clear, uh, I'm sorry, well, of course it's clear. Uh, some glossy top coat on this uh, before going in and doing the panel lining and decaling and we're also going to do a little bit of weathering. I've never really done a whole lot of weathering before, um, especially not this uh, technique that we're going to be doing, uh, but uh, I've done some tests with it and I think it's going to look pretty cool on this kit. So uh, in the next video we'll just spray some uh, top coat then move on to the other stuff, probably some panel lining and weathering and decaling. So that's it for this video, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.